Compliance is a profession where people work tirelessly to make the world a better place. And there are hundreds of amazing and inspiring women who have helped the field develop into what it is today. Great Women in Compliance is part of the Compliance Podcast Network. So join Mary Shirley and Lisa Fine as they talk with women in compliance who are making a difference. Welcome to the Great Woman in Compliance podcast with Lisa Fine and Mary Shirley. And today we actually are both of us together. And I would add as a caveat, we also have a G-Dick joining us, which is a great dog in compliance. Lisa has Rocky with her. So just in case there are any random barks, do not be alarmed. Do not be surprised. That is the origin of the interlude, should there be one. So today's episode is mainly focused on discussing and debriefing some of the highlights that Lisa and I had of the Society of Corporate Compliance and Ethics, CEI, Compliance and Ethics Institute. And so for those of you who had to miss it, hopefully this uh, addresses some of your FOMO. And for those of you who were there, feel free to add to the conversation as you see fit. So we wanted to kick off by doing a little bit of a compare and contrast with a couple of conferences that we've attended recently, just before the SCCE's conference. And I'll be kicking us off. I attended an HR conference and spoke at it. It was my first time at an HR conference a few weeks ago. And one of the things that really struck me was how affirming it was to be present. The HR stakeholders are such an attentive audience and you don't have to beg them to participate. So even before it's interactive, I was shocked that I was talking about culture of integrity and one woman in the front was like, yes, I thought, wow, this is amazing. And so I wish we had a little bit more of that in our compliance sessions, a little bit more affirmation of each other, a little bit more interactivity and contributions from the audience coming thicker and faster than perhaps we do in compliance. And in case you're wondering, do they have more delicious swag than us, given that they probably care a little less about improper influence? I will share with you The swag was the same sorts of stuff that we do, that we have at our conferences, but I was super pleased to pick up a vendor's pair of track pants to add to my work from home wardrobe. And it goes with a t-shirt that I got at the conference as well. And I'm sure there'll be no disputes about this. The t-shirt says, bad bosses ruin lives. I love that. And so I'm really pleased to have my new Navy work from home outfit that is courtesy of some vendors in HR. Lisa, how about you? First of all, one point I want to make is I assume it would just said bad bosses ruin lives in your commentary is I love that. That doesn't, I don't think that was all the t-shirt, was it? The I love that was not included in Bad Bosses Ruin Lives. That is absolutely correct. I do not endorse ruining lives, whether you're (laughs) a boss or anybody else. So anyway, yeah, work from home attire is always good swag. So one of the things I wanted to mention when Mary talked about going to the HR conference, I actually, for the first time, and I will use the more Mary's New Zealand pronunciation, I went to a vendor conference, which was the diligent one a few weeks ago. We I've worked with them. I know some great people. They do you know, good work. But for me, it was a little bit different because I usually go mostly to Compliance Week and SCCE, which are, for better or worse, more vendor agnostics. But what I thought was really good about this, and I was really excited, is that while you knew whose conference it was, they didn't, and they gave you good product updates and you learned things about them, it wasn't It didn't feel salesy that way, but secondarily, and really what I thought was really fascinating is they had some fabulous speakers. You know, I've talked a lot about their final panel was the whistleblowers from Enron, uh, WorldCom, and Facebook, who are all women, which I think is fascinating for purposes of our podcast. I've been writing notes and thinking Mm -hmm. about it. And throughout, there was a really interesting variety, some audit things that I didn't think about while learning about technology and other things. So that was a really positive learning experience for me. And I just thought I would share that part of it. They had some nice events and other things. But more than that, I was very impressed with the quality of speakers and the experience. And again, I'm saying that as somebody who didn't know what I'd be in for going in. Thank you for sharing that. I had a little bit of FOMO, I must admit. I am not a client of theirs and did not make the prestigious cut as an invitee. So thank you for sharing that, Lisa. They also allow people to come and to pay for it. I got very lucky, very funny. This is one thing I do want to mention before we change off is that I ended up speaking not because of anything we do here or because of being a client. 
There was a woman that I knew who was in sales years ago who ended up going to Diligent. And we got to know each other through our spin classes and bar classes. Oh. And she said when I knew, and it, when she said when I was, and now she's a, a sales lead there. And when she said to me, when I started thinking about this panel, I just immediately thought of you and how we talked about these things. And you helped me when I started here. And I would love for you to join. So the reason I wanted to mention that is you never know where somebody else might geek out with you about compliance, whether at the time or later. So that's a really fascinating point, Lisa. And it really shows the power of networking. And I am almost inclined, but not wholly to dust off my Peloton and get on there from that <laughs> store. That, that's amazing. And glad that your your profile remained memorable and that you were thought of in a moment to give you an opportunity. Thanks, Mary. So I think the next thing is maybe we should talk a little bit about some of our highlights mm-hmm. the conference. You want to go first? Sure. I have a feeling I'll say one that is both of our highlight, and that is it really felt this year yeah. people were together. You, I, We saw people, I've seen people I didn't see for the past three years. Yeah. I got to hear people speak, and I just, you know, me, you forget how dynamic and extraordinary that this field is and the people mm-hmm. that were bringing all of their interesting work and their A-game to all this. Like, I was learning. I was enthusiastic. It was, it really did it, it was an excellent combination of both networking and learning. And I think it really felt, I think we talked about this before, this is the first year that felt really like we were back. Last year, I was a little bit, while it was great, it was set, I was present, but it was the first time I traveled since COVID and mm-hmm. first time traveling since COVID to Las Vegas was a bit of a sensory overload, I think it's mm-hmm. fair to say, although yes. I thought it was a good conference. But this just, like I, that I was learning a lot and I thought that there were so many good panels, even some of the keynotes. What about? Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it any better. And you were correct. That absolutely reflects my predominant feeling. It was wonderful. And there are actually, I think some, there are some swings and roundabouts with that. One of the small points is that when the crowd gets big again, there are some people that I had really hoped that I would get a chance to chat with, meet in person. And I just didn't even encounter them. Hopefully they weren't running away from me. But the entire time, it was like last year, we just kept running into the same people over and over again. And so it was a little harder to have chance encounters with everybody because there were so many bodies around. But aside from that, I thought that was fantastic. Another highlight for me was one of the Sunday morning sessions. Friends of the podcast and Gwick alum, Lisa Beth Lentini Walker and Barbara did a wonderful Sunday morning session that in many respects was like a workshop. And they did a fantastic job. I didn't have the best night going in. So pro tip, in places like Phoenix, alcohol hits you harder than uh, perhaps what you're used to with the dehydration by default. I was feeling a little rough that morning and to have captured attention in that state, I thought they just did a fantastic job. And one of the aspects that I thought was really clever was that they managed to find a case of a CEO in crisis that seemingly no one in the room had heard of before to to give away the situation. And so we got to work through an activity. And I thought, candidly, I thought it was a hypothetical that we were working through rather than a real life example. So if anybody would like to use that fantastic example for some of your compliance activities, it was the Dippin' Dots CEO And that story is from about 2018. And if you are not a member of Team America or living here as an expat, Dippin' Dots, I just had my first experience with them recently at the Henry... Dorley, I think it is Zoo in Omaha, Nebraska, and had Dippin' Dots there. What a fantastic invention, America. You guys always impress me with your confections, processed foods, sweet treats. No one does it better. I can't decide whether that's like a compliment or oh, it a, is. a very, <laughs> one of oh, my, it one is. Of our great contributions to society, Dippin' Dots and Cotton Candy. So. <laughs> well, yeah, a big round of applause and great job to Barbara and Lisa Beth because it's not the easiest session, frankly. It's still the weekend for everybody. And so to turn up, get teaching, and then in Barbara's case, jump immediately on a plane and head back to the East Coast after only just arriving from the East Coast for another conference really took quite a bit of woman power and great job to both of our friends there. Yeah, that really was a fabulous panel. And I completely agree with you. I had a slightly different Saturday night 
as I had flown in by mm. most of the people who came in in the storms that night. It was a not FOMO moment for anybody. No, and it is I not. I had to check my carry-on bag, which they, mm. because it had been so difficult all day at the airport, there was no one there. So it took me about two hours to get from the airport to the hotel, which at about eight o'clock at night, which it's a hotel, the, it's a 10 minute drive, but there were no taxis and anything else. I only mentioned this because I was really into it and I got to the hotel and had, they had no food. So I had to finally, I had a salad mm. at 11. So when you have someone who's just come from being hangry and trying to find mm-hmm. something to eat and to be that engaged, it was real. That was really one of the highlight sessions. There was, I have to say the pre-conference sessions were excellent this year. I think I felt fortunate to go to that. So what do you think, what was a conference tip that you might want to share from this past year? Did anything new come to mind to you or resonate differently? Yeah, I, I have one that has just been included in my my book draft for the Living Your Best Compliance Life book. I just submitted the manuscript to the editor for that recently, so fingers crossed. But the tip I have is when attending conferences to think like you're a journalist in terms of when you're writing notes, as if you have a piece that you need to And I believe it makes you a more active listener and engages your analytical mind at an earlier stage or perhaps at at all in the process. And then as a follow-on, you can go through with actually submitting a a written piece, a debrief about the conference, learnings, inspiration that you've had from attending sessions and turn it into an organization like our sponsor, Corporate Compliance Insights, or many of the other fantastic media outlets in our field. So think like a journalist when you're attending the sessions and taking notes for a more active experience. Funny, my tip is almost the op- slightly the opposite. <laughs> I love it. Which is let it flow for some of the most ex- unexpected interactions or things like that. I think you can spend a lot of time and maybe it's, it's similar in some ways, but sometimes you plan ahead of time. I want to run into this person. I will learn something from this person or that person. But I found oh, yeah. I met some of these people at different tables or just when I popped and sat by myself at lunch with someone I'd never met before. That was just like, these are people that were just super interesting doing something so different that I think you and I are very fortunate in part because of this podcast and because of mm. other things that we do have so a lot of good inherent network up networking opportunities and we get to meet people but just some of the people who I would have never thought of it's one woman who was in a nonprofit who had just started it we had a couple of great conversations that it just would have never occurred to me that I would have learned about or done in the otherwise but it just flowed mm-hmm. some of that in our these are our objectives or conferences or this is what I want to do I think making sure you get some of that you can get some of your most valuable moments Wonderful. Depending on your mood and what you're after, pick and choose from our advice. One to suit you, you could do take the same advice and apply it on different days or even in different sessions, depending exactly. on how things go. Exactly. I mean, that too. <laughs> the other thing, Mary, we didn't talk about, but I wanted to mention this in here. I don't know, you and I had, we always end up, no matter what we're doing, we end up networking together a fair bit. But I think that's true. That the number of people who went out of their way to come and say mm. they listened to the podcast or they actually had an episode they loved or mm. wanted to meet us. And we had the word fangirl, which we sit here and do this. And it just mm. was so cool and gratifying and just mm-hmm. so appreciated. I think it's almost like I'm like, thank you. Would you like my number? But <laughs> I mean, I think that to me was really something about networking that was just really, I just wanted to make sure, because you and I were both had, had that experience and I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And this morning I got a message as well that was really lovely and I'll share some of it. I was planning on sending it to you directly, but essentially it was a woman who had attended one of my sessions and then she said that she was going to reach out but wasn't able to connect with me afterwards. And she felt really inspired and uplifted by the positivity, vulnerability, and stories of other women navigating and learning from successes and failures. And she says she's going to buy a book for all of her female team members. And she put at the end, I never would have written to you unless I had read that sending the elevator up was also important. I'm not necessarily sure that I'm up on the levels there, but I thought that was really nice that the book had inspired her to reach out and share that. For me, as well as conference tip, that was really a massive highlight of the conference. Definitely, definitely. And so I would like to hear about whether you had any disappointments of the event. You had your hangry situation. Yes, I had a hangry situation. It's hard to think about disappointments per se. I think 
there's something I w- always wish there were a little bit longer, or easier breaks to talk to people. I feel mm-hmm. like even though there are a fair number of networking opportunities, I feel like it, it, I always want more of that kind of interaction. And I also that maybe there's a way to do some more. We have breakout panels and discussions. That's the theory of the conference, but some more breakout networking. Now, to be fair, I know there's speed networking. And I don't do that. So that may, and that, mm. but that's on the pre-conference day, I think. Um, yeah. Some other things that aren't super early in the morning or late. I think there's often a pressure of, I don't want to miss a single panel. But then between yeah. trying to go to every panel, get to work, and, and then you lose some of that networking time. So I wouldn't say I really had any disappointments. And I don't know mm. if there's any way that they could change that. What about you? Yeah, um, I'll just speak to your sort of the networking sessions thing, if this gives you any less kind of FOMO about that. My very first conference that I attended was in 2015, and I signed up to everything. I was flying in from Hong Kong. I really wanted to make the most of it. But unfortunately, I lost my voice very early on during the networking sessions, and I just couldn't even participate. So there is, there's a limit. Yeah, so don't feel too bad about that. So my experience doing the networking was short and limited. In terms of disappointment, I was very excited about the inclusive invitation from Ty Francis and Jay Rosen to enjoy some entertainment at a dueling piano bar. It is a 20 minute ride back in between the piano bar and the hotels. And when I arrived, I wasn't let into the establishment. So I had my Hong Kong ID card on me, which I pretty consistently use. And let's be honest, I don't really look particularly like I'm below 21. I don't even look like I am slightly around 21, but I certainly don't look below it. And they refused to let me in. So that was super disappointing for multiple reasons. And uh, again, another pro tip based on my downfalls of this trip. In Arizona, they only have a very limited number of identifications that are accepted as official ID in bars. And the Hong Kong National Identity Card is not one of them. Another disappointment I had, and I'm not sure if it's a disappointment, but really just an area to leverage off because I saw this happening a lot when data analytics was first being spoken about. And it is when sessions focus on theory without practical examples and actionable tools that we can then take home to our own compliance programs. And I noticed that while there's been a huge improvement on that in respect of data analytics examples at this juncture, where this seems to be a real area of opportunity is in the behavioral science and behavioral economics sessions. I would love to see in the future a little less time spent on the theory and more on the application. And then my final one, which isn't super different from that one, is when the title of the session is not actually reflected in the content of the session itself. And there was one that I attended which had a very intellectual sounding description. And so it was very surprising to have almost a a meditation occur led by the speakers in the middle of that. And I'm assuming I'm not alone in the disappointment as a number of folks just walked out of the room in that one. And so I think it's a good lesson to, if you're going to do a wellness session, I've certainly been in one before where a meditation was included as part of it, but it was branded as a wellness mindfulness session. And so no one left the room because the expectations had been set and people had come along for that specific purpose. So remembering that what might work in one session may not work in another if the audience is feeling like it's not what they arrived for. I think that's a great point regardless, because Mm. if you think if something's going to be about topic A, Mm. And it turns into something that's very different. Not only is it people will leave, but they'll think, well, I had two or three. There, there's a right. of great panels. Mm. You want to know what you're in for. So I guess one follow-up for, for that is, what did you, obviously in compliance and in ethics these days, ESG is a huge part of what we're doing and what we're working on. It was a very big part of this year's conference. Did you think it was too much, not enough, just right? What's your thought 
about that as one of our topics. Mm. I didn't attend a lot of those sessions. She does not fall under me and I do try to stay abreast of it, but we do have separate staff at my company that, that deal with it. So I prioritize going to other sessions. I will say that the the significant number of sessions with ESG in them really does point to the fact that there is an appetite for G discussions by compliance officers right now. It continues to be a hot topic. I think one of the struggles with it is unlike many other areas where we agree on a lot of the theory, what falls under it and who should be responsible for the program in a lot of organizations, we don't have that kind of consensus. So that was one of the things that stuck out to me about being a, the status quo remains that we, it's, it remains a wee bit nebulous in many respects, but many people want to be getting their arms around it. Many people want to be attending these sessions. What about you, Lisa? Yeah, it's interesting. I think you just said something I've been thinking about really better than I've been able to, which is because there's really, there isn't a consensus while the discussion is a really important discussion. I think we have to try to make sure that we are figuring out what are the critical points, not who's owning it, why are we doing it, or this or that, because it's not that compliance necessarily needs to, or in some cases wants to mm. own ESG, mm. but it's so company and organization specific, and we're all figuring it out. So I think it's, and I think that this was done very well, but I think the big conversation is what is ESG? How do we want to make an impact? How are we involved? Not necessarily, this is another thing we should own as we build ourselves as a function and we continue to grow. It doesn't mean we shouldn't, but I think it, it's good for us to make sure that we're having the discussion about what the critical points are more than how is this managed? It doesn't mm -hmm. go the same way as other fads of the week that are very exciting for companies. Interesting. Excellent. And what about surprises? Anything that struck you as being coming from out of the blue? I'm just trying to think about what I feel like I've covered some of that other than mm -hmm. the hangry incidents as we're talking about. I felt as we, we said to alluded to it earlier about how this felt so much more like the compliance conferences in the community. I felt most I have at anything so far at this particular event. And I'm not sure if that surprised me mm -hmm. because I think I thought last year as like, we're back. So maybe mm -hmm. next year I'll say now we're really back. But this mm -hmm. year I felt just, I just was surprised at how excited and engaged I was throughout everything. And it was, I think it was the first time that I have felt at an event, a little less people overwhelmed post COVID and more. And that's a really great way to put it. I can see that totally. This is also speaking from somebody who is not a late night person at all this year. That is a goal for me next year to basically try to get more ingrained oh. in the time zone as opposed to still thinking I was on the East Coast the whole time. Again, hoping to alleviate some of your FOMO. I just got back last night and I could not get to sleep until one in the morning. Slept in today. So I'm now adjusted to the other side of the US time and not helpful because I need to be in EST time for work and other bits and pieces this week. So not your approach was not terrible. <laughs> not entirely deliberate. I also had to do some calls in the morning. So that part worked well. Yeah. So let's talk. One other thing. I have a, a surprise on my side. Oh, um, sorry. I missed a surprise. This was my yeah. bad. You were totally there for it. One of the things that I was surprised about that I think shock actually is a more accurate word was when you and I did not speak together this year, we were obviously sharing the love in a more distributed way. We attended each other's sessions and I was blown away by when we were doing our introductions and we got applause for stating that we were the co-hosts of this podcast. It brought tears to my eyes. My session was up first on the Monday morning. And so I guess that was most surprising. I guess that when your session came up on the next day, that the same thing would happen and it did. And, I, and for those of you who were Ellen McBeal fans, I really wanted to take a moment, but I couldn't because I was up there speaking. I just wanted to say for any of you who are now listening to this, I was so incredibly touched. It was such an emotional moment to have that recognition. That's not normal during these these intro intros and these sessions. And so for me, it was just hugely shocking that the work that we've done was acknowledged in such a way. It, it was pretty amazing. And then 
in my panel, Adam Belfour, when he said after that, when they clapped for both of us, he's like, I never want to be introduced after <laughs> the great women in compliance or Lisa about great women in compliance. Yes. And it was, yeah. that was really touching. So that was a great surprise. So where do you want to go from here, Mary? Where were you going to go? I was going to ask if we've had any spontaneous quickies. Oh, I do. So Lisa and I, we're very discerning with our quickies. So do not be offended if you are not listed in this very small batch. And the first one, I want to declare a conflict of interest, at least from an optics perspective, but I really would like to step outside of the conflict bubble and try and speak as objectively as possible. So I would say this year, the swag was probably not the best year of booth swag we've ever had. And the fact that you were in compliance, okay, maybe that's a good thing. But I think there's also a lot that you can do with things like clever branding and slogans to produce very inexpensive swag that compliance people will love. And it was uh, best booth swag, again, has to go to Ethico, formerly Compliance Line. They had, I think, 10 different titles of books that they were giving out at the conference. And my conflict, of course, is that one of them was Lisa's and my book. And of course, the community's book, really, Sending the Elevator Back Down. But so giving away books, I'm just big on the intellectual and educational giveaways anyway, and not just at conferences in the world like Dolly Parton and her book giveaway, that that type of thing. I'm just really all for it. So you've gotten over Dolly Parton's snubbing of us? No, I haven't really. Should we fill everyone in as yeah. to what that refers to when mm -hmm. I want to go? When we started the podcast, we were asked if we wanted theme music. So we came up with a number of things. We hadn't really been introduced to the concept of getting the license to use it, but we decided we want, wanted 9 to 5 to be our podcast music at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to Dolly Parton's people and Dolly <laughs> Parton, and we're still waiting to hear back. I think what she's done for the world far mm -hmm. outweighs that snub. But I would I'm, say so. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty confident that I fangirl D Dolly Parton forever for every single thing yeah. she's done. She's just amazing. Yeah. But it is a running joke that we send a letter to Dolly. Yeah, so, it's probably about time that we followed up on that, Lisa. Uh -huh. Might have fallen through the cracks. I'm sure she'd love to hear from us. I'm sure she's wondering when we'll get back to her. <laughs> What's your wookie? One of them, I'm going to I'm gonna add on to the swag. I, mm. The books were great. I am, they had a, sweat, a hoodie sweatshirt Ooh, from yes. episode. Yeah. I have to say, I, this is Sunday. We got back a few days ago. I have I wore that sweatshirt home. I wore it yesterday. It is like the perfect hoodie. So not mm. only did they have books, they had athleisure. So I have yes. to add on to that. Came in. It was super handy, actually, during the general session where our friends of the podcast Adam and Virginia were speaking, that room was freezing. And I just happened to have my Ethico sweatshirt. So I pulled it on. It did not go with the tone of my outfit. But at that point, my frostbitten body just did not care. And I was really pleased to have that available and have worn it since. So at the wellness resort with Lisa Beth, it was chilly in the mornings. Tucson is colder than Phoenix by a wee bit. So that sweatshirt came in very useful and has now been advertised to ladies of leisure around the United States and I believe the world as well. Yeah, there's a boxing class that knows about it too now. Anyway, <laughs> with that, I think you had a couple other wikis. I just wanted to, before I, I hand it back to you, yes. I just know that we've had one of our running jokes for the wikis, which we will do again when we hit our 200th episode, which mm -hmm. is at some point in mm -hmm. 2023. I think that Adam Balfour has taken a lead to Jonathan Armstrong in the comedic relief of the conference. Could have a conflict on that, given that I spoke with Adam, but I just thought he was just on fire. And I think the comet, I think they both need to keep working on that this year. But Adam yeah, may, mm -hmm. may be taking a 2022 lead. We've got some rivalry going here. And of course, they have no interest in being a rivalry. I'm just no, not at all. Um, it's in our own minds. <laughs> um, but I do have to commend the both of us on our transparency, what wonderful, balanced, and ethical individuals we are declaring our conflicts. All right. So with that, I think you had one more or one. one I, five. I do. This will be the first wiki that I've given out that has a runner up. And this is the class act wiki, 
which I would like to give to Ty Francis of LRN. Wonderful man, really just a very gracious person. And the runner-up is Matt Sykes of Dollar General. I met him for the first time at this conference and he is such a delight as well. So when it comes to being classy, I want to be just like these two gentlemen when I grow up. These GIC, great gentlemen in compliance. Lisa, back to you. But I don't really have any others right now. I'm, I'm starting to get ready. Again, just as we take recommendations for guests, if people have wiki ideas, we're always happy to consider them in the highly scientific Ooh. analysis process. <laughs> Which is totally arbitrary and depending on our mood, that's the process. Yes. And things that either met, were meaningful, entertaining, or mortifying. I think, Mary, you might be a little disappointed that there might not be much for Activision Blizzard this year, as that's been a special dubious achievement for you oh yeah good old activision i'm gonna just pipe down a bit on them for a bit and uh, and focus on my dip and dots and there, there's always twitter that'll bring us some stuff for the next <laughs> or kanye that pretty much uh, hopefully everybody has enjoyed our wrap up our impromptu slightly less formal wrap up before we go back to our regularly scheduled uh, last quarter of the year mary do you have any other comments that you'd like to, to mention before i close out I just wanted to reinforce my gratitude for everybody, even if they didn't say that they love our podcast, but just wanted to introduce themselves, who chatted to us, was so giving of their time and their entertainment, their thoughts. It was so, I might just call out a few of those names and I know I'm going to miss some folks and I apologize. I probably should have prepared for this better in advance, but to Lisa's point, this is very informal and somewhat impromptu, but seeing the two Christas at the event was lovely. Seeing the two Debs at the event was also lovely to the, the two quick alum seeing Virginia again representing team women of color on the general session stage was awesome and yeah I, I can't even think properly right now but I genuinely am just so very thankful to everybody that chatted with us and gave us big hugs and all the smiles and the laughs yeah I think it, it really does make you at least I say this a lot but these kind of experiences, not only do you get to learn, but you really do feel a part of a larger community mm -hmm. and it helps you come back, at least for me to come back to work and to the challenges and the struggles we have every day. Mm -hmm. think like, there are a lot of people out there who have my back and they get it. It's, it is a really gratifying and thankful experience. We, uh, we It makes me so appreciative of our community and as we come on to our last, as I call them, semesters of the year, we have some other, some really interesting guests to, to end the year again. And we really hope that you continue on this journey with us. And for those of us, we got a chance to say hello and spend time with at SCCE. Thank you so much. And for those of us, those of you who weren't there and want to catch up, we, we look forward to that. And I guess on behalf of Mary, me and the Compliance Podcast Network, thanks so much. And I hope you enjoy this episode of Great Women in Compliance. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Great Women in Compliance. We hope you'll join us in honoring the great women in the compliance field by subscribing to this podcast and leaving a review. 